Good evening, and welcome to Mandel Hall. My name is Sarah Cunningham, and I'm the Executive Director for Leadership Involvement and the Student Life Centers and the Assistant Dean of Students in the U University. But probably most importantly tonight, I'm the number one fan of the Monumental Women Project. We would like to welcome you to the Monumental Women's Project unveiling, cere unveiling ceremony for the bronze bust, for the bronze bust. I'm a little excited, so let me just be okay with this. <laughs> Woo! Um, I know, the excitement, is, this is a really big deal tonight. So, uh, we would like to welcome you to the Monumental Women's Project unveiling ceremony for the bronze bust of Dr. Georgiana Simpson, the event this evening. We are delighted to have so many students, administrators, faculty members, and family members in the audience to celebrate this historic day, honoring the important contributions of Dr. Simpson. The Mandel Hall portion of the program will include an array of speakers, the unveiling of Dr. Simpson's bust, followed by a reception in the McCormick Tribune Lounge. You can participate in the conversation tonight by using the hashtag, hashtag SimpsonMWP. The Monumental Women Project is happy to announce that in just a few days, the Department of Germanic Studies at the University of Chicago will hang the graduation portrait of Dr. Georgiana Rose Simpson in the department's seminar room. Let's give a round of applause for that. The Monumental Women Project is honored to welcome the provost of the university. Daniel Deermeyer serves as the 13th provost of the University of Chicago. As the provost, Deermeyer has responsibility for academic and research programs across the university and oversees the university's budget. Prior to his appointment as provost, Deermeyer was the dean of the Harris School of Public Policy from 2014 to 2016. He is also the David Lee Shinging Law Distinguished Service Professor at the Harris School and the college and a member of the board of the University of Chicago Medical Center, the board of governors of four, Argonne National Laboratory, and the board of trustees for NORC. Daniel Deermeyer is a fellow of the American Academy of the Arts and Sciences, the Guggenheim Foundation, and the Canadian Institute of Advanced Research. His, teacher, his teaching and research focuses on the formal political theory, political institutions, the interaction of business and politics, text analytics, public perception, as well as crisis and reputation management. He has published book, two books and over 90 research articles in academic journals, mostly in the fields of political science, economics, and management, but also in other areas ranging from linguistics, sociology, and psychology to computer science and applied mathematics. Please join me in welcoming Provost Daniel Deermeyer to the stage. Well, good evening to all of you. This is a wonderful evening, and thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, dear members of the University of Chicago community and guests, welcome to the University of Chicago as we commemorate one of the first African-American women to receive a PhD in the United States and the first to achieve this honor from the University of Chicago. Diversity and inclusion are core values of the University of Chicago. <coughs> and since the university's inception, we have always issued quotas or barriers to admissions based on race, ethnicity, religion, or other characteristics. That is particularly fitting that the University of Chicago would bestow one of its first PhDs in the United States to an African-American woman. It gives me particular pride today that this bust was conceived of and commissioned by two University of Chicago students, Asia Akcha, and Chai Monijo, who are with us tonight. Let's give them a round of applause. They deserve it. It's time for some pictures, absolutely. <laughs> Together they applied to and were awarded funding from the student government's uh, Uncommon Fund. And then they raised additional funding from a whole variety of different source, uh, of sources uh, to make sure that we can commission the bust, and then actually commission the bust of Georgina Simpson from a local Chicago artist. This tremendous accomplishment epitomizes the University of Chicago's culture taking on difficult problems with tenacity and determination to see them to their end. Finally, as the chief academic officer of the University of Chicago, I want to acknowledge the academic achievement of Georgina Simpson. Georgina Simpson enrolled at the University of Chicago in 1907, 
when few universities would admit a woman of color. Her time here at Chicago was not easy. She faced racial segregation in residential housing on campus and was one of only a handful of African Americans on campus. Nevertheless, she, she received three degrees from the University of Chicago, an AB, a bachelor in Germanic languages and literature in 1911, an AM in Germanic philology, and then at age 55, she completed her dissertation, Herder's Conception das Volk, I can pronounce this properly, <laughs> and received her PhD from the Department of Germanic Languages and Literatures on June 14, 1921. Thanks to our students, members of the Hyde Park community, and the hard work of Dr. Simpson, the University of Chicago, will now have a permanent reminder of the bravery and impact of this scholar. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Melissa Gilliam. Professor Gilliam is Vice Provost for Academic Leadership, Advancement and Diversity, and she will say a few things about Dr. Georgina Simpson's scholarship. Thank you very much. Thank you, Provost Diermeyer. Um, in just one second, we're going to welcome Melissa back to the stage. What we wanted to do is give you a little bit of context to show you the original video that the women actually submitted for the project, for the Monumental Women Project. Um, and it's important to let you know that the original video was sent to the Uncommon Fund, uh, members of student government, and in February of 2006, they were awarded a $9,500 seed grant, the largest grant ever awarded to a student group in the Uncommon Fund project. So sit back and enjoy the video, and then we'll welcome Melissa back to the stage to share her remarks with us. takes one quick meal in Hutchins and Commons to see the lack of females honored in our public art and monuments on campus. The project that Shay and I have proposed to the Uncommon Fund is an attempt to fix that intrinsic problem that our campus has right now. I think the project of Monumental Women is very important in order to honor women such as Dr. Georgiana Simpson and Marion Talbot. These two women work together to make sure that women like myself and Asia can have the education that we want and the education that we deserve. It really is time to bring to life the accomplishments and contributions of influential U Chicago females who have passed through the halls of our university. So that's where this all started. Now I'm going to do our introduction for our wonderful Melissa Gilliam. Um, as Vice Provost for Academic Leadership, Advancement, and Diversity, Melissa supports the Provost in activities relating to faculty development and institutional diversity. Melissa oversees leadership development for departmental chairs and faculty at each academic rank, leads initiatives to increase accountability and measurable progress in creating a diverse, inclusive, and an equitable campus. She supports the academic development of faculty as well as the work-life integration and provides infrastructure and training in recruitment and retention. Melissa is a professor of obstetrics and gynecology and pediatrics at the University of Chicago. She is the Ellen H. Block Professor of Health Justice and a member of the National Academy of Medicine. In November of 2012, she launched the Center for Interdisciplinary Inquiry and Innovation in Sexual and Reproductive Health, CI3, at the University of Chicago. Melissa has a bachelor's degree in English from Yale University, a master's degree in philosophy and politics from Oxford University, her medical degree from Harvard Medical School, and a master of public health degree from the University of Illinois at Chicago. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Gilliam to the stage. Dear Sia and Shay, thank you for making this moment happen. 
Thank you for reintroducing the University of Chicago to Dr. Georgiana Simpson. In many ways, her story has already become lore. She is our evidence of our commitment to diversity. We commonly say the University of Chicago awarded one of the country's first PhDs to an African-American woman. It is a remarkable history that a university would defy custom and educate a woman and a woman of color. It's remarkable. However, that story is always told from the perspective of the university. We have failed to tell the story from Dr. Simpson's perspective until now. Thank you both for reanimating this story and bringing Dr. Georgiana Simpson back to the University of Chicago. Thank you for reminding us that it is her achievement. It's her achievement and it is her story. Somehow its meaning had begun to fade with wear and tear becoming a mantra or a phrase for speeches, but not fully capturing the reality of her experience. Yet through the two of you, the story becomes a person. I share the feeling that so many of us must feel that somehow I know her. I too am a native, of Washington, native Washingtonian, so know of Dunbar High School where she taught. My grandmother, who was 15 years Dr. Simpson's junior, was also a teacher, and like Dr. Simpson, was barred from fulfilling her potential due to racial segregation. Like Dr. Simpson, my sister, my mother, and I pledged Alpha Kappa Alpha as a way of connecting to a tradition while being educated in predominantly white schools. Yet perhaps her story seems familiar because like so many of us who are perhaps here today in the audience, she occupied both an insider as well as an outsider status. She had the ability and the gifts to be admitted and yet did not fully belong. That sense of being allowed inside, but sometimes feeling quite outside is familiar to many of us. Some of us are outsiders because of our age, our race, our tenure status, our nationality, our religion, ethnicity, our ability status, our gender, or whether we have documentation. Tonight, as we think of her heroism, as a student who must have been very alone in her classes, her long walks across campus, her commutes home, thinking of her makes our own sense of being an outsider feel significantly less harsh. Dr. Simpson reminds us of the power of education and the gift that the universities such as ours bestow. The University of Chicago has never blocked admission based on identity, has never had quotas, nor laws prohibiting a group of people from entering. And it has held this value since its inception. But the story of Dr. Simpson tells us that opening the doors is not enough. Last year, I left my full-time faculty position to start a university-level initiative on diversity and inclusion. It was explained to me that diversity and inclusion is a core value of the university. And while at times we have lived up to it, at other times we have fallen quite short. The leadership asked of the university asked, how will we do this given our size and decentralized nature? My answer was that we had to rely on the local leadership of our staff, our faculty, and our students. The Monumental Women's Project epitomizes local leadership. Monuments are critically important for diversity and inclusion. They demonstrate what a society values and brings history to the fore. If you do not believe me, think of the recent events in Charlottesville. Monuments matter, but they are particularly important for changing institutions and changing norms. A monument of an African-American scholar of German philology debiases our minds. It challenges stereotypes and it forces us to rethink and reconsider our common narratives about who creates scholarship and about the history of the University of Chicago. To eradicate biases, we need to challenge stereotypes. We do this by seeing evidence that contrasts with our firmly held beliefs. Asiya and Shay, your vision and generosity have allowed us to do just that. Thank you. Good evening. I want to thank Dr. Gilliam for her time and investment in our project, as well as her wonderful remarks. 
My name is Shea Manijo, and I'm the co-founder of the Monumental Women Project. While researching the intricacies of Dr. Georgiana Simpson's personal life, we found that Dr. Simpson never married nor had children. At such a momentous occasion like this, we would have liked to have Dr. Simpson's family here with us today. However, we are not discouraged because Dr. Simpson was a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, the first sorority established by African-American college women. You all are her family. We are so honored to have all of you here today. We are grateful to have Ms. Dorothy Buchanan Wilson, the 29th International President of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Ms. Kathy Walker Steele, the Central Regional Director, and Ms. Bertina Power Stewart, the President of Theta Omega Chapter, and all of the members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Now, it is with great honor that I introduce Ms. Loanne J. Honesty King. Loanne Julia Honesty King is a retired vice president of City Colleges of Chicago Kennedy College. She's a member of Theta Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and the Central Region and Theta Omega Chapter Historian. King is a former Central Regional Director, International Treasurer, and recipient of the Founders Graduate Service Award. She is the author of three editions of the History of Central Region, Pledge to Remember, and the History of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Educational Advancement Foundation, Philanthropy and Perpetuity. Throughout her life, King has, commit, King has been committed to community service. She's a founding member and life director of the African American Legacy Board of the Chicago Community Trust and a member of the advisory board for Urban Prep Academies. She and her husband, of 56 years, Paul J. King Jr., live on Chicago's South Side and have two adult sons, Paul J. King III and Timothy J. King. Please help me in welcoming Ms. Loanne J. Honesty King to the stage. Thank you, Shay, for that introduction. Provost Dear Meyer, Vice Provost Gilliam, and all assembled, good evening. To Shay and Asiya, thanks to each of you for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this evening's program. The women of Alpha Kappa Alpha, Sorority Incorporated, have come this evening from far and wide to witness this historic event and to pay tribute to our own Dr. Georgiana Rose Simpson. I know that Shay did introduce a few, but I would like to please ask that you bear with me. And as I recognize those sorors again, I would ask that you stand and wave at the audience <laughs> as your name is called. Bertina Power Stewart, president and partner in this endeavor, Theta Omega Chapter. <laughs> My lovely Central Regional Director, Kathy Walker Steele. who is here this evening with us from East St. Louis, Missouri. I was expecting, and I can't see if they arrived, former Central Regional Directors Pamela Bates Porch and Giselle Casanova. Also from the Alpha Kappa Alpha Corporate Office, Executive Director Cynthia Howell, Deputy, <laughs> Deputy Director Nicole Barrett, Membership Director Patricia Watkins, <laughs> Assistant Membership Director Patricia Owens. <laughs> we were also anticipating the arrival of Crystal Tibbs, 
who is our Exhibit and Special Collections Committee from Detroit, Michigan. I understand that I saw Carol Mosley Brown is also in the audience. <laughs> to give you an idea of just how we support each other, I ask that all Alpha Kappa Alpha women in the room please stand. And now the AKA, University of Chicago, and the monumental Women's Project Connection. In October of last year, I received word that two University of Chicago students, Shay and Asia, had been awarded a grant to recognize and honor Dr. Georgiana Rose Simpson, an Alpha Kappa Alpha woman who had been initiated into Beta Chapter in Chicago, Illinois. I wanted to reach out to these students to congratulate them and to find out what Theta Omega and Beta chapters could do to help. I spoke with two Beta chapter members, Nadia Griffin, chapter president at the time, and Elizabeth Adetiba, who were attending the University of Chicago, and asked if they could please put me in contact with their fellow students. I pause here to mention that both Elizabeth and Nadia graduated this past year with honors from the University of Chicago. These young ladies provided me with the contact information and following a series of emails and calls, a meeting was held with Shay, Asia, Director Jennifer Kennedy, Mrs. Power Stewart and myself to discuss the Monumental Women's Project. Following several meetings and communications, tonight is a result of that cooperative effort. When Georgiana Simpson came to the University of Chicago in 1907, 1907, she was housed in Green Hall until racism reared its ugly head and several white female residents protested Simpson being allowed to live in their dorm. And a number of them moved out in protest. The details of this story are in your program. Needless to say, Simpson had to move out of the dorm and like other black students at the time, took correspondence and summer courses to achieve her degree. Her persistence, determination, and fortitude prevailed, and she was awarded a BA in German language and literature in 1911. She returned to Washington, D.C. that same year and began teaching at M Street School and later Dunbar High School. During the time that Simpson was in Chicago, earning her bachelor's degree, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority was established in January 1908 on the campus of Howard University and incorporated in the District of Columbia in 1913. Following the sorority's incorporation, Alpha Kappa Alpha began spreading out and establishing chapters across the country. The first chapter established after the sorority's incorporation and the second chapter of this international sorority was Beta Chapter in Chicago, Illinois. Chartered as a citywide chapter, but it had a strong identification with the University of Chicago. Why, you ask? Because all five charter members were students at the University of Chicago. An identity that was cemented with the installation of a marker and a planting of an oak tree in recognition of Beta Chapter's 100th year anniversary on the University of Chicago campus. The oak tree and plaque is located in the lawn off the southeast corner of Ida Knowles Hall. 
1917, still in a segregated environment, poisoned with racial and gender discrimination, and the bitter taste of being put out of the University of Chicago dorm still in her mouth, Simpson decided to return to the university to pursue a master's degree and ultimately a PhD. This time on her arrival on campus, she found fellow students of African-American descent who provided her a source of friendship and unity. She joined Alpha Kappa Alpha in 1917 and remained an advisor and a source of inspiration to all the members of Beta Chapter who she met daily on campus. Georgiana went on to earn her master's in 1920 in the Department of Germanics and Romance and her PhD in 1921. That same year, she returned to Washington, D.C. But before she left, Beta Chapter declared emeritus membership status in Beta Chapter. Such a status did not exist in the sorority, but Beta Chapter wanted to make sure that the members to follow would always remember that Dr. Georgiana Rose Simpson would always be remembered as an initiative in Beta Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Dr. Simpson is and represents the epitome of an Alpha Kappa Alpha woman. And we are proud that her legacy will be kept alive and stand in remembrance to all women of color that regardless of the obstacles with faith, tenacity, and a determined pursuit of your dreams, you too can accomplish anything. Thank you. Thank you again for your kind remarks, Ms. King. Next, I will be introducing someone who has played a very special role in the evolution of the Monumental Women Project, the sculptor of the bronze bust of Dr. Georgiana Simpson, Preston Jackson. Preston Jackson is a professor emeritus of sculpture at the School of the Art Institute in Chicago and the owner of the Side View Gallery, home of the Contemporary Art Center in Peoria, Illinois. He creates bronze figurative work in monumental steel and cast bronze sculptures, as well as two-dimensional pieces. Preston Jackson's work's work deals with his concerns about social interactions between various groups of people and is geared toward the betterment of our society. The intent of the work is to cause the viewer to see things that they may, have not, that they may not have considered before, or perhaps to examine them from a different, more universal perspective. Even if the audience does not see things from his viewpoint, he hopes to trigger some recognition of his intention and allow viewers to address it on their own time and terms. Preston's recent sculptures deal with the subject of our history, both precise depictions of well-known historical figures, as well as innovative portrayals of individuals whose lives, though unfamiliar to us, are part of our history that he wants us to learn. He seeks to honor the many people who have been left out of the visual history of our country and to tell their stories in an effective manner that is appropriate for all. He has been selected as the 2014 Southern Illinois University Distinguished Alumni, was awarded two regional Emmys, and was a 1998 laureate of the Lincoln Academy of Illinois. Please help me in welcoming Preston to the stage. Well, I don't have much to say, but you know, I'm in the company of really wonderful people that have achieved, that have achieved a lot. Carol Mosley is out here. And Sam Gilliam's daughter, of all people. I say that with this kind of smile on my face because Sam is one of those artists that have definitely paid his dues, gone through a lot, and, um, you know, well known. Uh, I just can't help but tell you the story about meeting Sam. I invited him to my studio in Peoria, Illinois, and I wanted him to see my work because I had followed him since I, um, I was in high school. So he walks in and he looks around. I had my work set up. It took me a day and a half to set it up. And he walks to my junk pile, all of my scrap steel, all kinds of shredded things, and he said, these are great. 
And then he left. <laughs> but anyway, it's an honor. It's an honor to be here and, uh, to, uh, and to be a part of this. The young women who visited my studio, uh, you know, I wanted to act young and fast and cool, you know, in front of them, try to impress them, but they were on it, you know, and they kept to the facts when I was, when I was trying to be funny. But um, they... <laughs> They told me specifically what they wanted, described in detail, and the measurements and so forth, and almost designed it right there in the room. Uh, so I did everything they wanted. I also increased the size of the piece, and I built the, um, uh, the neck piece, the podium kind of thing that it stands on. So I didn't want you know, them to come back and say, hey, we want something else. But anyway, uh, I want to thank them uh, for coming to this, and the two young ladies um, who are responsible for this. Uh, you did a great job, and thank you. Thank you all. Thank you again, Preston, as he is really the third piece to this monumental women project, as the project would not be here without his vision and his, his skills. So next I would like to do a little introduction for Jen Kennedy, who is the Director for Community Development and Operations in the Reynolds Club, the Student Life Center here at the University of Chicago. She graduated from the University of Chicago in 2002, beginning her career on M campus very soon after. During that time, Jen has served as an advisor to dozens if not hundreds of student organizations, supervisor to hundreds of student employees, a host to countless university traditions in a variety of campus venues, a mentor, a coach, a confidant, and a steward for this project. Jen has served as the primary project advisor for the Monumental Women's Project since its inception, supporting Asia and Shay with carrying their mission and honoring influential women across the University of Chicago. Please join me in welcoming Jen Kennedy to the stage. Good evening. When two undergraduate women came to my office in early 2016 to share their vision for the Monumental Women Project, I had no idea how much the project would change me personally and professionally. My role on campus, as Sarah mentioned, is twofold. As a member of the Center for Leadership and Involvement, I work closely with students to create meaningful involvement opportunities during their time on campus. In my role as steward of the Reynolds Club Student Life Center, I work to create an inclusive environment where our campus community sees themselves and feels as though they belong. Obviously, the Monumental Women Project weaves these two concepts together beautifully. Asia and Shay, as you are well informed now, had got their original seed funding from the student government on Common Fund. Before their money was even deposited in the account, which you may not know, the two women had already lined up about two dozen meetings across campus to cre create awareness and to continue fundraising for a monument in honor of Georgiana Simpson. Close to three years, over 2,000 emails, I know, I've counted, and $50,000 later, we have these two to thank for an impactful addition to our campus. The combination, combination of Shay's insatiable fo focus and Asia's passion made the Monumental Women Project practically unstoppable. As soon as I met Shay and spoke with her about the project and her role on the leadership team, I knew she'd be a pleasure to work with. Shay has the ability to keep the larger picture of a project in mind and not get bogged down or distracted when things don't go her way. Over the course of the project, there have been a variety of roadblocks, yet Shay is literally never deterred. When others might have given up or at least taken a few days break to regroup and rest, Shay doubles down on her dedication to the project and has shown she can literally create something from nothing. By being such an advocate for the legacy of Georgiana Simpson, Shay implores those around her to explore the story under the history we know. Asia's infectious enthusiasm for the project and her inclusive nature mean that she continuously gains confidants and supporters as she promotes the project and Simpson's legacy. It's obvious to anyone speaking with her that Asia has a tremendous capacity for compassion and an incredible integrity. While earning both her bachelor's and master's degree in four years, Asia has still found time to do this project and engage campus and local media through an op-ed just today in the Chicago Maroon to primetime interviews with WBEZ and others, spreading the positive message of monumental women. By asking those around her to consider public art and the depiction of women, she pushes them to prioritize women and girls and the accomplishments of many that may otherwise go unremembered. 
As the months passed, passed, there were hurdles to overcome, given the sheer scope of the undertaking. Many times, while meeting in my office, talking through an issue that might prevent us from completing the project, one of the three of us would check all the others, would say, anything worth doing will be hard. Shay Anasia taught me the valuable lesson of letting go of ego so that you can honor legacy, and I hope I taught them a little bit about self-care, drink some water, and remembering to go to class, even on the day of your unveiling. Over the past few months, we've witnessed a national dialogue about the art in our communities. After working so closely with the monumental women, I don't know if I'll be able to walk past another piece of public art without thinking more deeply about that piece. Who was the artist? What about the stories of those who funded and celebrated the work? What about those who commissioned it? I'm proud today to celebrate not only Dr. Simpson, but also these two women who have changed the face of our campus. Through their dedicated work, Asia and Shay have not only honored the memory of an amazing woman, but also helped us create an environment where members of the community can clearly see themselves and invites us all to think more deeply. So thank you to Shay and to Asia, my very own monumental women. We would like to take this moment to thank Jen Kennedy, our project advisor. We would not be here today, I can promise you, without <laughs> Jen. We really wouldn't. Ever since we received our first Uncommon Fund grant, she has been there for us, supporting us in every possible way. Again, we cannot thank you enough, Jen. Thank you. I'm going to let Shay say a few words as well, but you really kept this team together through it all, and we really, none of us would be here without you. So thank you so much. Thank you. Talk about an open door policy. <laughs> I'm just so grateful to have Jen not only as an advisor, but one of my favorite mentors here on campus. There's been multiple times where I just walk into Jen's office, uh, just either frustrated or tired, um, or just quite frankly nervous about everything that we've worked on here tonight. Um, and from the bottom of my heart, uh, man, I shouldn't cry. <laughs> I'm tearing up. <laughs> uh, from the bottom of my heart, I just thank you so much because, you know, at this point, Jen's office is my office, so <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Pretty lucky person to work with such talented people every day. Uh, so next, I'd like to introduce Asia, the part of the duo. Uh, Asia is a dual degree student pursuing her master's degree in international relations um, and bachelor's degree in political science. She was born in Istanbul, Turkey, and grew up in Louisville, Kentucky. This past summer, she interned for the State Department at the U.S. Mission to NATO, and prior to that, at the Hudson Institute in Washington, D.C. Asia's passion for women's issues was first developed in her high school years when she participated in Louisville Girls Leadership. On campus, she sits on the Institute of Politics Student Advisory Board as the Communications Chair and works at the Chicago Project on Security and Threats. She previously served on the Editorial Board of The Gate, the Institute of Politics Undergraduate Political Review, and as a Class of 2018 Representative on Student Government. Asia's academic interests are primarily in security and war studies with a focus on the Middle East. Please join me in welcoming Asia up to the podium. First and foremost, I would like to thank all of you for joining us for this monumental occasion to honor an incredible person whom Shay and I have come to respect and admire so much. Over the course of the past few years, we have worked to find the most appropriate way to bring to life Dr. Georgiana Simpson's accomplishments on campus. 
Her life embodies traits that we, as members of the University of Chicago community, value. Perseverance, intellectual curiosity, a commitment to equality. It is this collection of qualities that makes Dr. Simpson a role model for all. In the early days of the project, we asked, what kind of peace are we envisioning? Where could we place a monument? Indoors, outdoors? Who would be the artist of this piece? And how do we, two individuals who know absolutely nothing about the art world, go about attempting this project and pursuing it? We quickly learned that no task is possible without a strong team. Ideas are only promising when you have others to support them and bring their opinions to the table. Our team, our trio, as you have heard, will always hold a special place in my heart. Jen, again, we cannot thank you enough. You took us under your wing and you assisted us in every way that we could have ever imagined, as well as all of the ways that we never imagined. Shay, I am infinitely appreciative of the contributions you have made to our project. It is hard to believe that we had met during orientation week in I House during our first year at U Chicago. In a lot of ways, our entire college experience has been defined by this project, our common effort. We have learned and grown over those years. We have worked towards achieving a unique goal, and I am so proud of that. Although it took several challenging years of work to make this all possible, it was always energizing to have Dr. Simpson constantly on our minds as our role model. A scholar of German philology, she embodied true academic passion and drive. In 1921, after years of being confronted with one obstacle after another, she became one of the first African-American women in the entire country to receive her PhD. This accomplishment is tremendous, and it is also tremendously inspiring. My hope is that sharing her story through this monument will inspire and empower others, from current U Chicago students to future ones, to the thousands of families who tour our school every year. A solid bronze monument, a classical way of honoring a more contemporary kind of hero. When I contemplate the positive impact that Dr. Simpson's monument will have on future generations, I think back on my own childhood. Growing up as an immigrant in Kentucky, I couldn't help but notice many of the local landmarks. To me, they exemplified what it meant to be an American. The memorials we had in Kentucky honored Abraham Lincoln, Muhammad Ali, and Colonel Sanders. Um, <laughs> I specifically remember wondering, how had women and girls like myself contributed? Where did we fit into the American fabric? I recall pondering this idea as well as I trekked through the halls of the Kentucky State Capitol, puzzled by what I saw. In the State Capitol Rotunda, there are five towering figures honoring influential Kentucky men in bronze and marble atop literal pedestals. And if you turn a corner, walk into the back corridor, you'll see a glass case storing an assortment of porcelain dolls. This is how Kentucky chooses to honor its first ladies. I was 12 years old and I was appalled. <laughs> it's true. Monuments not only ask for respect, but for emulation. The Capitol was calling upon young women of Kentucky to emulate fragile 18-inch figurines trapped in a glass case. <laughs> I wanted to fix it. A few years later, I worked on the concept of monumental women in Louisville, trying to spread the word locally. Then, I arrived at UChicago, and it was clear that this campus was not immune to the greater societal um, issue of underrepresenting women in our history. I was 18 years old, and once more, I wanted to fix it. At that, point, at that point in time, Shay and I would have never imagined that we would be here tonight with all of you in the crowd for such a historic day. We will never forget this moment for the rest of our lives. In the past few months, communities across the country have been pondering similar questions to those of my childhood. 
I urge everyone here tonight to think not only about monuments that should be removed across our nation, but also about those that still need to be put up. Fuller histories that still need to be told. And so, my hope is that the spirit of this monument will not stop at the doors of Reynolds Club. Rather, just as Dr. Simpson had served as a role model for me, Shay, and countless others, I hope that our action here at U Chicago can be as pioneering as her underlying work. Just as Georgiana Simpson's academic career represented what is possible for women, so too may this monument exemplify what an inclusive view of our nation's history might look like. We haven't fixed it. We haven't even begun to fix the problem. But I'm inspired, I'm awed by the attention this project has received. I think about 12-year-old me at the Kentucky Capitol staring at those dolls. And I am proud knowing that young women at U Chicago won't relate because they'll be able to gaze into the eyes of Dr. Simpson and they'll know anything is possible. History matters, representation matters, equality matters, and pioneering women of color matter. May Dr. Georgiana Simpson's monument end the silence of underrepresentation and inspire a new wave of recognition for monumental women and their monumental victories. Thank you so much. How lucky am I that I get to work with these two amazing student leaders on an hourly slash daily, sometimes minute by minute basis. Um, so the other half of the duo is Shay. Uh, Shay is a fourth year from Baltimore, Maryland, studying political science with a minor in human rights at the University of Chicago. During her time at the university, Shay has served as a civic engagement chair on the student advisory board of the Institute of Politics, a staff writer at the undergraduate political review, The Gate, an undergraduate liaison to the Board of Trustees within Student Government, and the co-president of the African and Caribbean Student Association. This past summer, she was a legal intern at Lawyers for Human Rights in Pretoria, South Africa, where she assisted refugees and migrants in gaining legal status in South Africa. Currently, she is the Office of Communications Assistant at the Posen Family Center for Human Rights, and additionally, she is a non-resident research assistant to the director of the Center for African Studies at Harvard University. Please join me in welcoming Shay to the stage. Good evening again. Uh, sorry, this is my uh, last week at the university, so I'm feeling very, uh, very sentimental at the moment. When I first came to the University of Chicago, I must admit I had my reservations. I remember fondly looking for the black people in the dining hall, in my classes, and in positions of leadership. I soon discovered that it wasn't that I couldn't find them, but that there were simply not that many of us to begin with. So I had to accept early on that this university would be a place where I would have to be conscious of the spaces I inhabit. Opportunities and resources wouldn't just be given to me. I had to seek them out and at times even create them. The reality is how I felt when I first came to campus is an all too familiar feeling to many students of color who attend universities across the nation. So I channeled the initial feeling of being uncomfortable into curiosity. So as a first year in the university, I went rummaging through the university archives in search of understanding. I found the archive entitled Integrating the Life of the Mind African Americans at the University of Chicago. It was in this archive that I read of a woman named Georgiana Simpson, who came to the university in 1907 to begin her undergraduate degree. 
Upon her arrival at Green Residence Hall, she was met with protest from white female students who didn't want her living in the residence simply because she was black. The Dean of Women, Marion Talbot, and Sophinsma Breckenridge made the decision that Georgiana Simpson could remain on campus. However, University President Harry Pratt Judson overturned this decision and made Simpson find residence off campus. Nevertheless, she persisted. <laughs> she returned to the University of Chicago to begin her graduate degree in 1917. In 1921, Georgiana Simpson became Dr. Georgiana Simpson, making her one of the first African-American women to earn a PhD in the United States. Too often, black women's stories are neglected, untold, and hidden. We are far too often times the footnotes in other people's stories. We honor University President Harry Pratt Judson Sophinsma Breckenridge, and Marion Talbot with the naming of college dorms and public art pieces. But Dr. Simpson's name has yet to receive that same honor. All of this changes today. <laughs> Dr. Simpson will be permanently fixated here in Reynolds Club, a space that was once reserved for white men only and is now a center for student life. Her bronze bust has her looking onward with her, fed, with her head facing away from the bronze leaf of President Judson. <laughs> <laughs> she has a slight yet triumphant grin. Her shoulders are broadened and she stands there in all her glory in her graduation gown. When people pass by her bronze bust, I want them to feel emboldened, inspired, and worthy. I want Dr. Simpson to become a part of our campus life and culture in ways that she couldn't when she attended the university. So, I have a suggestion that I would like to run by everyone tonight. We have a myth here at the University of Chicago that if you step on the seal here in Reynolds Club, a magical curse will befall you, and you won't graduate in four years. <laughs> but what if we can undo the curse with a new tradition? Students can tuck Dr. Georgiana Simpson's bronze tassel as a form of reassurance that not only will they graduate, but they'll survive and thrive. While myths, and curse, when, while myths and curses come and go, there are still many obstacles that black women face on college campuses today. My heart breaks for the stories of black women. My heart breaks for the stories like black, of black women, like Jazzy Rowe, who was tormented by her roommate at University of Hartford. Women like Taylor Dumpson from American University, who faced racist torments for being elected the first black female student government president. These stories are a reminder that the aspirations of diversity and inclusion is just that, an aspiration. We must acknowledge and deal with our past, as painful as it may be, so that we can create a more equitable future. So I say to these women, this Dr. Georgiana Simpson bronze bust is for you. For the students of color across the nation who ever questioned their place at the greatest institutions in the world, I say, this bronze bust is for you. For the professors who mentor students of color and provide resources and opportunities, we need to succeed. The professors who say to me, you no longer have to work twice as hard just to have half of what your counterparts have. This bronze bust is for you. 
For the staff members who have a truly open door policy, who provide encouragement and comfort at the toughest of times during our college careers, this bronze bust is for you. For my mother, who is here tonight, For my mother who is here tonight, who always taught me that if there is no solution, you must become it. If there's no path, you must pave it. And if there are no opportunities, you must create them. This bronze bust is for you. As Viola Davis stated during her Emmy speech, the only thing that separates women of color from everyone else is opportunity. If not for Dr. Simpson, I and so many students of color like me would not have the opportunities that we have today. So I say before everyone here tonight, may the permanent picture of Dr. Simpson's legacy remain an inspiration to the next generation of women for centuries to come. Thank you. I would like to now invite Asia back to the podium as we prepare to unveil the bronze bust. We are so delighted to unveil to you this evening the bronze bust of Dr. Georgiana Rose Simpson in its permanent location, the hallway right outside of Mandel Hall. We will be projecting a live feed of the unveiling to the screen you see right behind us uh, from the hallway so that everyone here in the auditorium tonight can have a great view. Presenting to you for the very first time, the bronze bust of Dr. Georgiana Rose Simpson. <laughs> 